Good morning. Kick that up. Morning, ma'am. Screen, Terida. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am. Sulipa. Sulida. It is Sulan English. Screen. Screen. Sulida, your face with it. Ma'am, screen, Terida, ma'am. Okay, okay. Cherida. Okay. May told us second unit over. Today we can start the third unit. So your third unit is input output interface. So input output interfacing the you will be seeing memory interfacing and input output interfacing and then parallel communication interface, senior communication interface, digital to analog, analog to digital interface, timer, keyboard display controller, inter controller, DME controller, programming and applications, and their case studies. Case studies the patina. Graphic light control, LED display, LCD display, keyboard uh, display, as well as uh, alarm controller. Okay, so these are the topics going to be covered in the third unit. Okay, so full interfacing. So what is interfacing? What is interfacing? Any one of you? In the three most of them. What is interfacing? Any one. So interfacing inter. These two terms are different as well as in the meaning also different. Okay. So interfacing is nothing but uh, you are going to interface. Uh, any two devices, okay. For example, you are having microprocessor with some setup. Some setup means it may have some memory device with the uh, uh, holding capacity eight bit. Okay, eight bit da adala carry over panna muriyo. Andha mari or device with the memory with the memory. Adhe madri you are going to connect the same device with some other device. Okay. This is a rare device that connects to the device. That device is the same device. It is 16 bit. It is 8 bit, but it is 16 bit. It is the same data transferring or any other communication happens. What will it do? It is 8 bit, but it is 16 bit. It is 16 bit and the data transfer is carry over. It is not having any capacity. Okay, for the next device. the what it will do? Cannot be sent properly the data or information to the other device. Okay, so to avoid that, we are going to use one more circuit in between the two devices. Okay, so that circuit is said to be interfacing circuit which will match the 
match the key factors of their need. Okay. Just nothing but it will, uh, the uh, circuit is designed for matching the two device requirement. Okay. That is said to be interfacing. Have you understood? It is the data of the data that is compressed or elaborated, whatever it means. Okay. Then, what do you do? Your uh, interface device will send the data or information to next device. Okay. So, that is the uh, need of interfacing in between the two different devices. Okay. So now we are going to see the memory interfacing. So memory interfacing, the interfacing going to be placed in between the memory device and microprocessor device. Okay. So microprocessor patina 16 bit folder. One of the memory device is either 8 bit or something else. Either bit folder. So on the, on the difference layer, it must able to uh, send the information properly to the other device, okay. And the we are going to use the interfacing circuit or device in between the memory device as well as microprocessor device, okay. So here, uh, they given when we are executing any instruction, we need the microprocessor to access the memory for reading instruction code and the data stored in the memory, okay. So we need to access the memory device by the processor. Okay, what microprocessor and the memory device are just from it. But now, it out the instruction I execute from that. Ena the instruction of code, man known language the instruction. And ananda particular instruction order code word will be saved in the memory device. Okay, ena machine will understand only codings, not the instruction. Yeah. So after and the codings are on the read from you. Depends if I have to fetch the memory device. One minute. So here uh, the codings, instruction coding, okay. So instruction coding as well as the data will be stored in the memory. So that microprocessor need to access your memory device, okay, for all for executing all this instruction. So for this, both the memory and the microprocessor requires some signal to read from and write to register. Okay. So uh, microprocessor need some signals for writing and reading process in the memory. Okay. So the interfacing process will include some key factor to match with the memory requirement and microprocessor signal. So the interfacing process is nothing but it will satisfy the uh, or satisfy or match the keys okay, with the memory as well as the microprocessor. Okay. The interfacing circuit therefore should be designed in such a way that it should match the memory signal requirement with the signals of microprocessor. So interfacing circuit is designed uh, so that uh, your memory device uh, requirement as well as your microprocessor device requirement should be matched. Okay. Matching device.
Next, semiconductor memory interface. So here you will be using two semiconductor uh, memories, that is RAM and ROM. Okay, I think you all know two semiconductor type, RAM and ROM, that is random access memory as well as read only memory. The semiconductor RAM are probably uh, classified into two types, that is static RAM and dynamic RAM. So the semiconductor memories are organized as two-dimensional array of memory location. For example, 4K, 8K or 4K byte memory, okay. uh, which will contain 4096 location, where each location contains 8-bit data and only of one of the 4096 location can be selected at time. So in Patina, your semiconductor memories will be in the 2D array. A two diamonds that is rows and columns. In this manner only it will be arranged in the array form. Okay, rows and column. So upper rows and column group uh, row size and the column size that will be mentioned that in the form of 4K cross 8K. In the manner the cross will be used for determining the size. Okay, so 4K cross 8 8K. Okay. Um, uh, in Madri, uh, the total memory uh, locations will be determined. Okay, so Patina only one location, that is memory location, can be selected only at a particular time. So in the second one, one uh, the memory device access from now, whatever memory location for the matuna, you can be able to select. Okay, you cannot select the whole memory location part at the same time. Okay, this is the semiconductor memories. So now we are going to see the general process, procedure for static memory interfacing with A086 briefly now. Okay. So first point, the general, the general procedure of static memory interfacing with A086 is briefly described here. First point, arrange the available memory chips so as to update 16-bit data bus width. Okay. So here we are going to uh, arrange the memory chips to obtain the 16-bit data bus width. Uh, the upper 8-bit bank is called order address memory bank and the lower 8-bit bank will be set as uh, even address memory bank. Okay. So 16-bit 16-bit uh, bank sorry 8-bit bank will be available here in that the upper 8-bit bank will be called as odd memory addressing uh, bank array madri lower 8-bit bank will be called as a even address memory bank see this will be seen in diagram okay i will show you in uh, textbook okay so in the picture of other you will be able to understand this point Memory device entire are on the path, even the odd memory is remaining on the even memory. Okay. Then, second point connect available memory address lines of memory chips with those of the microprocessor and also connect the memory and inputs to the corresponding processor controller signal. Connect 16 bit data bus of the memory bank with that of microprocessor A0. 86. So now we are going to connect the address line, memory address line of memory with the microprocessor, and as well as we are going to connect the memory with the input output device. Okay, and controlling uh, process that is controlling signals. Okay, either we have to read or write, where we have to read and where we have to write. That is where in which location, memory location, we have to write and uh, read that will be given in the signals okay then control signal will represent the where to read as well as uh, what to do that is either reading or uh, writing the data in the memory okay that will be provided by the uh, controller of microprocessor okay
now interfacing input output ports so input output ports are uh, the devices through which the microprocessor communicates with the other device or external data source or destination so if you want to connect a microprocessor with some other external device for example input device or output device or other external memory device either or a peripheral device okay we need to connect with the uh, external device means you have to connect through the port input output ports of the microprocessor okay so input output port will act as a point where it is leaving as well as entering the device okay that place will be called as a port input output port the next point input activity as one may expect is the activity that enables the microprocessor to read data from external devices and for example keyboard these devices are known as input devices as they feed data into microprocessor system so input activity okay it is nothing but you are getting that microprocessor going to get the data input data from any other external device for example keyboard so keyboard la uh, if you uh, enter any data or if you press any key means that will be taken as the input for the microprocessor for doing the process okay appa enna pannudhu your microprocessor reading the data from the keyboard or getting the data from the keyboard reading is nothing but getting the data okay so that's they are given in the second point so your keyboard or keyboard is nothing but input device okay input device feeding the data into microprocessor that is feeding means giving okay giving data to microprocessor system okay this is the input activity and then output activity what is output activity it is input activity to opposite activity is output activity it is nothing but from the microprocessor you are going to send the data to external device okay so microprocessor going to give the data to external device hello one minute so output activity process is nothing but opposite to your input activities uh, which will transfer the data from microprocessor to external device okay munadi input activity la pathina external device la rendu microprocessor vaangu appo enna panna pora microprocessor rendu external device ku anupa pogudhu for example crt display any display device your monitor anything else you keep it any display device okay that will be acting as the output device okay so microprocessor uh, run panna program na display panna pogudhu or enter panna data va it going to display in the output device okay display device la display panna pogudhu okay so these devices which accept the data from your microprocessor system will be called as the output devices okay 
Thus, for a microprocessor, the input activity is similar to the operation, while the output activity is similar to write operation. Okay. So, input activity is in a reading process. Output activity is writing process. Okay. So, reading and writing based on microprocessor work. Okay. So, microprocessor read and microprocessor write and write down. We have to design it. Okay. Either it is input or output. Not by any other external device. Have you understood what is uh, reading and writing process in the interface? So next, we are going to see the input-output interfacing. So what are the steps we, are, we have to follow uh, while interfacing an input-output device with the microprocessor? First step, going to connect the data bus of the microprocessor system with the data bus of the input-output port. So uh, input-output port, uh, uh, external device la or data bus, ko, microprocessor system la or data bus. Ko. In the end data bus we have to connect and then derive a device address pulse by decoding the required address of the device. So address uh, for, to which device you are going to connect. That device address should be uh, known or derived okay, by decoding the address from the memory okay, and use it for uh, chip selecting of the device. Okay. So, uh, the same address will be entered in the chip selecting pin. Okay. This port, chip selecting port of the device. Okay. Which chip have to be selected uh, for uh, transferring the data with the external device that will be mentioned in that address. Okay. Then use a suitable control signal IORD, IOWR. It is nothing but input output read and input output write. Okay. So, uh, render process done for the render and control signal. In an input output interfacing, we you know, do upper memory value input output. Na, output na. So, input output device, la, either you are going to read or writing. And the I will read, I will WR. Okay. To carry out device operation. So, main and first one the data bus, the render data bus, we connect from no. Second step address. Inga poi eludano, inga poi read pandu. And then a location will be given in the address, okay, which is in which will be available in the memories, okay, to select the particular location. So, inga poi na eludano ma, illa read pandu ma. And the control signals will be provided in the device. These are the three steps while you are interfacing the member, uh, input output uh, device with the Microbus. Okay. So these are the different between memory and input output and the input output map to input output. So first point 20 bit addresses are provided for input output devices in the memory mapping input output mapping. But in memory mapping input output mapping, only uh, either 8 bit or 16 bit address can be provided for input output devices okay to address it then uh, here uh, memory mapping input output la input output ports or peripherals can be treated like memory location and so all inspection related to memory can be used for data transfer so in another either for inspection when the memory is to promo they inspection then we uh, input output map and use panikla. But in the memory mapping, input output mapping, la na, render and inspection na. either in and out. The render inspection I use panida data transfer panamudi cross the phone input output device. Ko. Okay. In the one the na, many inspections are available for memory devices. Okay. The Ella use pan the inspection memory device access pan the Kenan inspection use pan the Ella may input the output device I access pan the you can use it. Okay. And in the upper case, only two inspections in and out. Okay. Then third point. The data can be moved from any register to port and vice versa in the memory map report. Okay. In the uh, data available in the register and the port to port and the in the register to move particular. But here input output map reports data transfer 
happens only between accumulator and ports okay accumulator device mattum da accumulator is the register okay accumulator ko ports mattum da nadakku data transfer okay the last point when memory mapping is used for input output device the full memory address space cannot be used for addressing memory full memory address space ye use panna matter but in the input output mapping it is memory mapping uh, input output mapping la patina full address space ye use panna okay these are the difference between the memory map input output input output map input output in the name le irukku so in memory memory device ah use panni da input output port ah use panna poringa inga ana input output ports ah use panni da input output device la map panna poringa okay so indriye nee easy ah identify panna type search you can differentiate these two okay okay we can end up the today session